Dragon Ball Super Episode 108 is now officially in the history books as at long last we're moving forward into the one hour special showcase for Dragon Ball Super Episode 109 and Dragon Ball Super Episode 110 and joining me here today guys to share our thoughts and predictions for the upcoming special is going to be my good friend Emish is live as we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Super Episode 109 and based on that preview we got a lot I, I would say a lot more than a lot of people expected and again uh, if you guys do have any other comments to add be sure to go on ahead and drop your comments down below as to what you guys believe is going to happen in next week's episode emish welcome back onto the channel dragon ball super is getting hotter every single week and this has been weeks and weeks of anticipation and months of buildup up until this very point in having during fight goku now judging based on the preview the one thing that sticks out more than anything else of course is the spirit bomb now i wanted to get your first reaction and your first thoughts on this on the idea that goku's using the spirit bomb bro and if you look at you know the way he's utilizing the spirit bomb he's in his cow can form and we've never seen that before so my first question to you is do you believe that this is you know necessary to use in the tournament of power because it's kind of hard to believe that goku has gathered that much energy so quick because it's like the question lingers it's like where did he get this energy from like his teammates the gods i mean is he able to transcend the void and, and asking people from earth it's kind of weird so your thoughts on the spirit bomb your thoughts going into episode 109 from what from what it looks like it looks like it's going to be very intense um i disagree with the concept of having rebrianne still be around because to me I, i'm not a big fan of her hopefully enough my overall prediction for her is i think that jiren's gonna ring her out as opposed to Goku, because Goku looks like he's taking a sweet time, so I yeah. don't think it's going to be Goku, so going into 109, I'm calling it right now, Jiren is going to eliminate Rebrianne, but going forward from there, what are your thoughts on that, and more importantly, what are your thoughts on the Spirit Bomb, and do you agree with it being used, or do you think it's just going to be another ass pull as Jiren just stands there waiting for that bomb to hit him, what do you think? Alright, so the topic of Rebrianne first, um, if we saw the previous, basically the previous shows of uh, Remood as actually talking to Jiren yeah, via telepathy, yeah. And he's telling, and we know based on spoiler information, that they order or they ask for Jiren to go and squash or go after Goku, Goku or Universe yeah, 7. Yeah. So I'm assuming while he's fighting Rubian, Jiren just comes in, just one shots Rubian, gets her out of there. I hope so. And then that's, and that's how the fight between him and Goku starts, which is cool. Uh, I think Jiren needs to do that. I think Jiren needs to assert himself more. Um, I'm, I'm actually okay uh, with the actual gods giving him the, you know, giving him the signal. Okay, like now is the time to strike. Let's get serious. You know what I'm saying? So, which goes to show, uh, and I'm gonna, I'll probably do a video on this soon. Uh, my, my theory that I've been having for quite a few months now. I think me and you did a video talking about it, uh, but we did a video where we talked about why Jiren could be the strongest mortal. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think that's the case. And because in the same video, I also talk about how uh, I feel like his relationship with the Hakaisha is much closer than it is with Topo. And I feel like if anything, in the anime iteration of this series, how uh, Jiren could be this alleged candidate for, for next in line to be Hakaishin. Whether or not that's, that's going to be mentioned in the anime is a different story, but based on information that we know, and based on his relationship with Vermood and how Universe 11, especially the Kai and Vermood, really depend on Jiren as opposed to Topo, despite Topo being next to them in this next exhibition match, um, you can clearly see the difference in relationship there. So that's one. And two, to talk about the Spirit Bomb, Dragon Ball Heroes, the Twitter page for it, yeah, uh, they, they showcased a little snippet of actually that same form, where Goku was using the Super oh, Saiyan Oh, Bukowski of course, 20. I mean, even based on yeah. spoilers, we got, like, he's gonna use it, but, like, do you think it's something that's that makes sense? Like, because, like, where did he get this energy from? Like, where did well, he the, get this energy from? I guess that's, I, I guess that points to what his new technique is. Perhaps, maybe, um, he... Gathering energy? Maybe, maybe he did it, he, he, apparently that's what it is. I mean, listen, I'll on take that. On his own? Listen, I'll take that I'll over... Trump's gathering energy Trump's from God, spirit, gathering so, energy yeah. from like from from opponents that are just like sitting on the bench who are TN who are TN Krillin and and Master yeah, Roshi who are not gonna provide yeah, much yeah. power. So I'll take that over anything that we previously thought. If he can create this technique or, or a Genki Dama like attack, something that's like the Genki yeah, Dama, right? Then okay. However, here's where I gotta draw the line though. And I don't mean to nitpick. Hopefully you guys can agree with me in the comment section, let me know. I think the idea of Goku using Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 should be more than just the spare bomb. I think we should see him fight Jiren like that. No, I, I don't I, think. I, 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 I it, definitely think it is. Yeah, I, I hope so because based on the preview, it just shows him doing that. The stuff that Dragon Ball Heroes posted today on Twitter, yeah, they yeah. showcased the same exact screenshot, the same exact technique, the same exact spirit bomb, the same exact Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20, which was confirmed by, uh, by them. It yeah, was translated yeah. Japanese. So I just hope that. It's not just um, Jiren deflecting the attack. Like I said, I'm pretty sure because we see the bomb going towards Jiren. Jiren's just like, okay. Yeah, he's like, just this? standing you there, know? dude. He's exactly. just like ready for so, it. 
yeah, it's just insane. But I hope Goku actually fights Jiren first in that, you know, I'm using pretty that sure he, is. he has and to. And then resorts to the Genki Dama, which I hope is the case. I just hope they don't fluff it where it's just the Genki Dama, and then that's what drains Goku to the extent where he's just like maxed out, and now he begins to transform. I just think that it hurts the Kao Ken. Because Kao Ken, every time he's used it, he's used it to actually go within melee range of his opponent. You know what I'm saying? I want to see the movement. I want to see the animation. If that's not the case, I just think they're really missing out on like market value points and overall ratings for the episode. I really hope they fight and then he resorts to this. Oh no, dude! I I definitely think they are. And we we saw based on their like you know a little brief battle in his base form while under Super Saiyan Blue. You know, Jiren is avoiding Kamehameha. Yeah, he just... He's grabbing him by the leg, throwing him onto the ground. Yeah. Like, Goku looks like he's in trouble, dude. And I think that you're right. I think that he is going to use, you know, the Kaioken technique as a method mm -hmm. to possibly charge the bomb. Um, right. I think that, yes, he is going to fight Jiren using Kaioken times 20. Because, um, yeah. uh, like, it's it just... Why would you introduce a form like that and not have, him, not have it be executed to where it's showcased in a hand-to-hand -hand combat like scenario of course, of course. so i feel like you know similar to kaioken times 10 for me i want to see kaioken times 10 first because it'll only oh, okay. make the assessment to where goku's like okay i never thought i would have to come down to this but let's see how far you can handle me when i, mean, I do this if and he then, can, you know if he already acknowledges where jiren scale is compared to him then it would make sense why goku you know makes the necessary calculation to say okay even times 10 won't be enough let's go to the limit and let's go times 20 off the bat. And that, could be, it's still that understandable. could be his limit. That, that could be his quote-unquote yeah. limit that he was yeah. going to reveal to Topo. Because I remember, I actually watched the uh, Topo fight again. And I said to myself, what if Goku, after he told Topo, let me show you what it's like to, you know, go beyond my limits. What if during that portion, he actually meant, let me go on ahead and utilize a higher form of Kaioken. Because if it was... Kaioken times 20 Super Saiyan yeah, Goku against Topo. Topo, to, yeah, Topo would have been done, done for. for it. But, and I, I think that Goku is unaware uh, of this new limit breaking power because yeah, i yeah, i, I yeah. said to myself you know what it, it's it's a little cliche for him to already know it so mm -hmm. how how cool would it be if he didn't know it but instead he thought previous that his max was kaioken times 20 and after getting smashed out the water he's like what do i do i can't that that's my max like what am mm -hmm. i what is what is this guy capable of and then finally achieving something even greater than you know than he even thought was possible so um mm -hmm. in, in your opinion do you do you see Kaioken times ten prior to twenty happening? Just for Goku to make that assessment and saying, okay, well, let me try blue, let me try regular Kaioken, let me try times ten. Okay, none of that's oh. working. Let me try times twenty. Do you see that happening, or right. do you see him just fighting him in, in, in base and then jumping straight to twenty? What do you think? Well, with twenty nine minutes left in the tournament, no. That, based on that, if it was a, like if it was just a grudge match outside the tournament, right? Yeah, I could see it happening. Like they would wait, they would not waste, but they would use a whole episode. Uh, where Goku gra gradually just keeps giving him more and more and more, and then it's not enough. But th that's why I felt like in a tournament format, if they were to do that, they would rush it completely. I feel like Go Goku would just hit him one time, see Jiren tank, and then just just say, okay, times 20, and then they just rush that. So, and so you just... don't see him, like, jumping gradually? I mean, like I said, that. it's possible. It's possible for sure. I just think that um, if Goku, like I said, if he knows, if he's able to scale where Jiren stands, then he would be able to make that assessment that, okay, Kaioken's not enough, Kaioken times 10 not enough, I gotta push it to the max. You know, push it to the limit. You know, yeah, and just yeah, push yeah. it and just go all out and just go times twenty and then to and then resort to actually um, a Genki Dama of that magnitude. Uh, and then J where Jiren is just like, like, bro, like, come on, man, like, you know, I'm just sitting here, just, you know, <laughs> how, how much time is it? What time is it? How much time is right. left? In turn? I, I, so, I I think to scale him, he ought to do that because I mean, that'll that'll only allow us the audience to see where Goku stands during each. Uh, individual Encounter. transformation. It, okay. So yeah, oh, okay. it's, it's it's like it's like you put him in different predicaments. It's like okay, well, base form Kao Ken and Kao Ken times ten stand no chance. And and right. obviously, I think each one would suit him better in terms of like standing a better chance against him. But you know, yeah. although Jiren smashes all those techniques and forms out the water, it's like okay, at least Kao Ken times ten puts him in a better position than regular Kao Ken, as opposed to twenty puts him at a much higher advantage. Um, well, maybe like maybe going times twenty off the bat would be more beneficial. Uh, instead of going Kao Ken and then Kao Ken yeah, times 10 yeah. and then you're tired to some extent then you got to push yourself and exert yourself even more go times 20 then he doesn't right. even utilize the full times 20 the only reason why I'm saying that is spent. because look at the way he did that against hit he went blue then Kao Ken then stopped and then he said okay well I know what I need to do and then he upped right. it up even more so mm -hmm. I was like okay what if that's the same thing where he keeps upping it up and then once right. he hits his peak we we see them fight Jiren beats him somehow he gathers enough energy to create a spear bomb throws it at him apparently enough deflects the bomb or maybe absorbs the bomb who knows what happens the bomb's gonna be gone it, it doesn't do anything to him so yeah. and, and and which leads into his obliteration afterwards so it just depends like how they portray his stamina thing 
That's all. I think then, if like if for example, if they don't really push the whole stamina concept, like because that's what they've really been doing to justify why fighters aren't fighting at full potential, right? Right. So it's like okay, if they just use that, then if they if they ignore it, I could see him Goku, you know, gradually pushing it, taking it to the next level, which is cool. Like I said, it's it's a staple for Dragon Ball. We've seen this numerous times before. Right. Right. I would right. like to see it again. I just think like objectively, um, I feel like. It might just shoot straight to 20 if he's already assessed how uh, strong Jiren is going forward. So, I wanted to bring up Vermouth for a second. Do you think that okay. he has any sort of direct connection to Jiren to where... Because obviously, I, I think that you're right. I think that maybe, you know, Vermouth orders him, like, take down Son Goku first, just out of anything. So, um, yeah. between that, like, do you see... Do you see Vermu doing the same thing to other characters as well, possibly talking to Topo? Because it's weird. It's weird the way they're portraying it. Because, yes, Jiren is the top dog and he's the strongest guy on the team. Obviously, you want to communicate with the, with the strongest fighter just to get some clarity as to where he stands. But what about with Topo? Do you see Topo being involved next week at all? Because in the manga, <laughs> you know, they're, they're building him up as like, this is the next Hakaishin. Whereas opposed to now, it could be possible to where in the anime they mention possibly Jiren being that guy, you know? Because right. we don't know the direction as of right now. Because, I mean, after this episode, bro, everything is going in a, in a, in a, in a, in a direction to where it's, it's becoming very unpredictable. Because who would have thought we'd see Golden Frieza? Who would have thought Frost would get wrung out so quick? And even, forget, yo, forget him ringing out. Just erased. That was it. Like, gone. So, Did we talk about that? We oh, talked no, about oh, it. No, we're definitely going to talk about that. But like, yeah. just a a any any final thoughts going into that particular fight? Because I feel like with Blue Goku in base, he's going to get annihilated fast. But yeah, I think the Kaioken fight's going to be prolonged. And I think that's what may drag it out. Because we're going to do a separate video talking about 110. Because as of right now, all we know of is 109. But mm -hmm. going forward from there, let let let's say post 109. How do you see the fight resulting? And do you see Jiren... Or just obliterating this man to the point where like there's no comeback or do you see do you see Goku having some sort of comeback to where he kind of just nudges Jiren to the point where Jiren actually had, is forced to you know defend himself because with Kaioken times 20 bro think about the multiplier that's a very high multiplier you know you're yeah. multiplying Super Saiyan Blue and with that do you see him having any competition with Jiren or is Jiren just gonna one shot and that's it's over from there what do you think? I mean, based on what's being portrayed, they're really marketing Jiren to be this real powerhouse character. Um, so if the next form is going to be equal to or greater than Jiren, it'll, it would only make sense uh, without explaining, you know, definitively where Jiren stands, how strong he is, his backstory, you know, stuff like that, uh, that he just completely just shuts down Kao Ken in, in every aspect. Um, and that's because I, I'm not calling it, I'm just calling it based on like how it's being presented to us from the, as the fan base. So it's like Jiren is being portrayed this way. And if Jiren has to defend himself to an extent against Kaioken times 20, then Limit Breaker Goku going forward, there's no reason why Jiren should just, <laughs> be, you know, he should just lose to it automatically. It's right. like an auto KO. So it's like there has to be a, a standard. And right now the standard is Jiren is stronger than anybody, you know, ever, like imaginable so far. In and the tournament, you still don't think he's the mortal, right? No, I personally, I okay. I don't think so because going forward with Goku's new form, they need to market and showcase it more in the series. I think if Jiren is this alleged mortal, it hurts anything after that. Because if, if okay, if Jiren is a mortal who the Hakaishin cannot defeat, then it's essentially what you're saying is what you're implying to the fan base. It kind of hurts an idea of Goku fighting any Hakaishin for going forward. Despite whether or not how great, you know, how great they might animate the episode, despite it all, the thought of, of Jiren being stronger or you know, not being defeated by Hakaishin, and then Goku going forward being a god tier character, let's just theoretically say based on the information, that he beat Jiren, yeah. right? Or whatever happens in the tournament, now he's fighting a god, so it's like, why? Because he already beat Jiren, so yes, it would be cool to see, I'd, I'd watch it, all of us would watch it, we'd cover it for sure, but the excitement isn't there as much as it would be if Jiren was not the mortal, and going forward there was somebody else, so, and that person was right. the next plateau for goku to so climb because so otherwise you're kind, of, you're kind of saying like what's next after that exactly if, if you it have hurts to, it. okay okay right okay. right going going forward objective like i said if the goal is to pump out more content if the goal is to showcase this new form not just in the tournament right but to showcase the new form going forward goku has to use this form to fight somebody else he has to train how to use the use the form better how to how to master it whatever the case is 
because the, the concept of this god tier forms have, have always been something Goku has to train to master, yes, and then he will yes. get something new after that. So now he mastered Super Saiyan Blue. He gets Limit Breaker Goku, whatever the form is name, you know, whatever the the name is going to be. And then it's like, okay, well, he's the strongest in the multiverse. If he be Jiren, so what's the point now? You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, right. It loses its luster. So you got to give something. You got to give a new wall for Goku to climb. The next wall would be. I would like to see another rematch with Goku and Vegeta towards the end of the series. I see Otherwise, Goku and Beerus, bro. Oh, like, so, so would I. Shit. So would I. So would I. So he just needs another wall. And if Jiren is the wall, then it's like, what's after that? You know what I'm saying? He's the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they, they they built a pretty <laughs> strong wall, bro. Um, yeah. <laughs> but go, go, going going back into what happened in this episode, episode 108. I loved this episode because Frieza is such a deceiving, manipulative snake. And in both good and a bad way. What I picked up from this episode was, very interesting enough, was how Whis and the Kaioshin were talking about, well, you know, he's 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 not fighting to be resurrected in a sense. He's fighting because those Dragon Balls can eliminate any threat that opposes him, even after death itself. Even as we said, having the powers to kill a god. And then and we and Beerus was like, hey, you mean me? And, and I I love the overall foreshadowing that it's that it is highly possible and people may not think that way but yo it's highly possible that frieza could be the last remaining warrior and just i need you to take a second to soak that in because what if it is him what if he ends up being the last person he gets those dragon balls and it's like Makes we know the we know the intentions of everyone else and, and and don't get it confused bro jiren's not an enemy and for anyone out there watching people are saying oh he's a bad remember jiren's a pride trooper if he if he did get the dragon balls i'm pretty sure he would do good for that but Frieza? No, he would do something horrible. So, what was your take on just the foreshadowing of what he's here for, and your thoughts on <laughs> Frost getting erased? Because that was that was so that out was the great. blue. That was out the. It was great, but it was out the blue. Like, as a fan, I'll be honest, and, and I, I pretty much ranted about this in my breakdown. I really wanted to see them fight just momentarily. Yes, I get it. Frieza would win. He is stronger. Champa confirmed that. Champa said, "Yo." Don't be foolish to fight him. He's stronger than you. I get that. But you can't sit there and tell me as a fan that all this hype and buildup of them being parallel and, and pretty much similar in nature that you wouldn't have enjoyed seeing them fight in their 100% forms as we saw them, you know, get all beefed up and stuff because although it would have been very one-sided, just seeing them lock horns momentarily would have been, I think, satisfying for a lot of people. So what's your take on that? Did you agree or disagree with, you know, Frost having to get rung out so early and... What are your overall thoughts on the way they've just foreshadowed Frieza's, you know, intentions going forward? Oh no, I liked it. <laughs> I don't have any arguments against that. Uh, I liked how basically, I mean, because I talked about it, I'm not sure if it was with you on a discussion, or I may, I may have talked about it in like another review. Right. Well, I don't remember what I did. I think I talked about it in a spoiler video. But I know I remember mentioning, um, I could personally see, yeah, it was a spoiler video, I, I, where I said, I don't see Frost, you know, um, staying loyal to Frost, I don't see Frieza staying loyal to Frost because his agenda, whether it's to be resurrected or whether it's to be superior to everybody in existence, does not coincide with Frost. It has nothing to do with him. And he's, his chances of working with Universe 7, he's, he has a higher chance of obtaining that goal as opposed to working with someone like Frost, who, well, hasn't really done much into the tournament. He knocked off Krillin, and that was it. He tried to knock off Roshi, couldn't do that, ran away right. against Vegeta. So you can clearly see, and Frieza makes it clear, what, you know, what makes you think that I would stay, you know, work with an amateur like you? Right, and it's clear, it's, it, you know, Frieza is on a completely different tier level, and it kind of goes out to where I I might have mentioned it with you in another video where I talked about uh, Frieza can can register Frost as a threat, not physically, but based on his nature because he's a mirror version of himself. So right. it would be best to get rid of him early, right, and then go forward with whatever he wants to do. I still think the whole concept of foreshadowing uh, today's episode makes us feel like okay, we can trust Frieza, but for now. You know what I'm saying? Can we still For trust now. him going yeah, yeah. Cause, forward? Yeah, because even Shin was like, yo, he he has something yeah, brewing, yeah. Right, so, and even then it's kind of like, well, what about, I mentioned what about the Super Dragon Balls. Okay, well, he could win the Super Dragon Balls. As such, he has the, he has, um, he has possession of the Super Dragon Balls, doesn't, doesn't really utilize the Wish right away. He made Goku promise that he would use the Earth's Dragon Balls to revive him. So now you revive him, then you use the Super Dragon Balls to wish for whatever you want, like we talked about maybe getting rid of anything in his way. That's another thing to consider, right? So that could be his ultimate agenda going forward. And it kind of brings back the whole concept of what Dragon Ball Heroes, which you showcased on your channel yeah. uh, a little while ago, where Dragon Ball Heroes kind of With quote unquote Goku teased and us. At the end. Yeah, oh and then maybe God. Goku's fighting Jiren. Yeah, Goku's fighting Jiren, blah, blah, blah. And then Goku does the same thing to, um, Frieza does the same thing to Goku that he did to Frost. And just before 
you know, I guess a Jiren gets, they, they have a draw, something like that. And then maybe Frieza ends up taking advantage of that, pushes both of them out. No, it, no it, it, it is possible to where, yeah. there, what if there is a situation to where Goku does manage to get Jiren out. And then just as mm -hmm. you think, like there's the last two of Goku and Frieza, Frieza mm -hmm. rings him out like that. Yeah. Frieza rings Goku out just like he did Frost. Like, you know, never mm -hmm. trust anyone like that. Would, do you know how big of a detriment that would be? Beerus would shit himself. I mean, because it's, it's like we don't, because his intentions, like you just said, he wants to be resurrected. He wants to dethrone Beerus. He does not like Beerus at all. And that's why I love this episode so much is because you see two sides of him. You see him being kind of nice to go on at the end. But during that whole process, he was an asshole. And, you know, he even, he was going to kill the Yardrat. He was like, yo, I, I purposely missed his vital points because, you know, I could have done it, but I don't want to. Um, but do you see Frieza getting involved in episode 109 at all or anybody else? Because it's kind of hard to fathom that it's going to be a back-to-back -back episode. Uh, premiering, mm -hmm. uh, ironically enough, the same weekend as Comic Con, um, mm -hmm. and with this happening, with this grand battle happening, it's kind of hard to imagine that everyone else is just gonna sit back and watch. So, in your prognostication, do you see any other character hit Vegeta, Gohan, Frieza, Topo, Kaba, Kale, Khalifa? Do you see anybody else doing something outside while these two are fighting, or do you think that 109 is gonna be only solely based on those two? Because if you think about it. The one thing that I'm gonna have a hard time kind of like understanding here is how quickly Goku's gonna create the spirit bomb because normally enough it takes him a while to formulate that as seen with, you know, Frieza and Kid Buu. Took him a while to create this and then you're telling me in the span of 22 minutes he's gonna create this bomb, throw it, go Kaioken, fight Jiren, fight Jiren in base form, fight Ribrian, all in the span of 22 minutes. So any final thoughts going into 109 in terms of like other characters or is it only gonna be Goku and Jiren? Well, I mean, even in the Namek arc, Frieza showcased he's much, you know, he's capable of creating large energy blasts in seconds, right? Right, that's And Frieza, that's from though, yeah. the Namek arc. Like, Goku should have at least learned to some degree of creating something, maybe not, you know, like something of that magnitude at least. Kid Buu does the same thing, Beerus does the same thing. Yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah. Goku has fought can do it, except for him. Yeah, so I think, yeah. I think it's about time he's gotten to that level where it's just like, okay, I'm a god now. Like, you know, I'm technically god tier whatever like here let's just create a big ball and throw it at somebody you know what i'm saying it, it, it's it just would be kind of stupid if he wasn't able to do that so going forward with like you said with 29 minutes as of today only right? a minute past yeah, yeah. 29 minutes so remaining. exactly so with 29 minutes going into that episode i don't think he's gonna take three minutes four five six seven minutes to create that bomb and then Jiren's just letting him do it on purpose nonchalant like whatever yeah, i was I'll gonna ask you is later. he gonna let him do it on purpose like what's your take on that because come uh, on bro like like, you know what I'm saying? Just, it's kind of weird. I Well, it's a one-hour special. We're expecting a lot of action. I don't think they would waste that on charge-up time for Goku. And then, you know, just to showcase Beer, you know, not Beer, so Jiren deflecting it, right? It's just like, okay, like, if we knew he's going to deflect it, why would, why would you let him take time? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 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 yeah it yeah, is yeah, Jiren yeah. trolling him. But like I said, because of the, because of the, the format of the episode, it being a back-to-back kind of concept, I don't see them skimping at certain things they shouldn't skimping on. However, I don't know, I could be wrong, but ultimately though, I think Jiren is, I don't know if the episode is going to be based on Jiren solely. I would imagine we're going to see other characters. It only makes sense. Right. They got to, they kind of got to, you know, they got to remind us of guys like Universe 3. Where's 17 and 18 doing, right? Friday, we got a Frieza episode finally. Uh, we got Gohan. Where's Piccolo? Uh, what's Universe 3 up to besides the rice cooker that we saw today in this episode, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, what's what's up with all these guys? Universe 2, the rest of Universe 2, Universe 4, what's going on with Universe 4? Universe 6 and the Mechians, where are they at? What's going on with all of these guys? So yeah, I think we're going to see a little bit of everybody, but the spotlight, it will be very evident to us that it's going to be based on Jiren coming in and just wrecking face. And then it's just between him and Goku, and Goku's just like, oh shit. <laughs> you know, I wasn't expecting you, Jiren, but okay, let's let's see what we can do here. And then it's just GG you know, Rigo. I just love the preview how Goku admits, like, yo, like, I'm, um, you know, I'd, finally it's time for him to actually move. But even during that process, he goes to say that his key is just super overwhelming. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's kind of hard to even imagine. Because, you know, we all we all assumed that Merge Zamasu was going to be like the be all end all for these guys. Because, you know, that Merge Zamasu forced these dudes into fusing, and even that failed. So it's like, at yeah. that point, you're like, okay, we have to call Fusion always fails. No, yeah, yeah. And, and it's just like, all right, well, at this point, we have to call Zeno because we have no other reserve left. And to think that another person who's not a fused character, who's a singular fighter, comes along and beats you up so bad to where you can't fuse because 
accordingly enough, you can't use the earrings. So that's illegal. <laughs> he beats and, he beats the transformation. Yeah, out of he you, beats like. the transformation. And he beats you into getting a new transformation. How crazy <laughs> yeah. is that? He beats you in. He beats you into discovering a new form, dude. Like that's that's crazy. So yeah. uh, post your comments down below, guys. What are your overall expectations and predictions for episode 109? We're gonna be covering episode 110 separately. It is a back-to-back -back special, so it is two episodes under one hour. So we're gonna be talking about that later on. Um, Emish, I wanna thank you so much for joining me. Thank you all so much thank for you. watching. If you guys have a similar opinions, different opinions, post your comments down below as to what you guys believe is gonna happen. And um, if, of course, you guys are new to the channel, punch that subscribe button, guys. Enable the bell. Click that bell icon because YouTube is drunk and they never notify anybody whenever we post videos so if you guys want to be up to date with spoilers discussions nudes all that kind of good stuff make sure you guys click that bell also i believe i will leave a link down below to emish's channel in which you guys can go on ahead and check his channel out for more dragon ball content my hero academia he does boruto porno all sorts of awesome stuff so make sure you guys give him a subscribe guys thank you all so much for watching and we'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below take it easy guys peace